Welcome back. He's a community activist who's dedicated to making the bluegrass a better place. And he's also a musician who's worked with everyone from LL Cool J to the Black Eyed Peas. Now Divine Karama is taking on a new role, a partnership with the University of Kentucky. He joins me now to talk about it. Thanks so much for being here. Hey, how you doing, Jennifer? Thanks for having me. I'm doing great, thanks. So tell me about this new partnership with the University of Kentucky and what it means. Sure, so University of Kentucky has started um, something called the Cornerstone Community Innovation Center. Um, it's where the old Kennedy bookstore was and their idea is to try to collaborate ideas from the community with the students on campus. Um, so it was an application process where different community organizations presented an application on what they could bring to the partnership. And out of, I, I think, maybe eight or 10 other organizations, um, you know, we made it through the application process. So um, the name of our collaboration is called the Community Campus Connection. It's made up of myself, along with Believing in Forever, my nonprofit, Black Soil, which is another nonprofit in Lexington, and Operation Making a Change. And collectively, uh, we will be engaging the students and faculty on campus. Uh, we'll be bringing kids to the University of Kentucky um, in hopes of just making our community better. When you take a look back at 2020 and now 2021, where do you see our community and where do we need to go to get to where we need to be? Sure. Um, I think healing needs to take place more than anything. Um, I think our community needs to heal. Um, I think conversations need to be had um, after that healing process is taken. Um, and then we got to come together. Um, ultimately, that is the goal for most of us is how do we come together as a community? Uh, and I don't think we can come together until we heal and have those conversations. I am hopeful that through this partnership with the University of Kentucky, bridging that gap between the college and the community, um, having students off campus, engaging our community efforts while also bringing the young people that we serve onto the college campus and showing them that there's something more. Um, I really think that that can um, be a huge part in bridging that gap and bringing people together. Speaking of the University of Kentucky, we saw last week where the UK men's basketball team took a knee before a game and mm -hmm. there was a very passionate reaction. In some cases, there was even a sheriff who burned Kentucky merchandise. What would you say to the people about what those players did and why it's so significant? I think what people have to understand is they have to understand that, you know, uh, kneeling is actually accepted even by many in, in, in the armed forces as a respectable way um, to protest, silently protest, against injustices within the country. So I think people first need to understand that. Um, secondly, I think that people have to understand the impact that 2020 has had on these young men. Um, these are not racehorses that are just out there for our entertainment and amusement. These are young people with emotions and minds and hearts. And I think with the social unrest of 2020, the global pandemic, keeping us all inside, seeing some of the injustices that we've seen on a 24 hour news loop, seeing the Capitol building breached and the difference in how that was treated um, as opposed to some of the Black Lives Matter protests, um, that, that, you know, that's had an effect on these young men. And I think them in solidarity, joining arms, kneeling in a silent protest um, that didn't hurt anybody um, to me, I think that that's a great thing. And even if we don't agree with the way that they're protesting, I think that we got to support these young men for who they are as people and not just what they can do on a basketball court. What are some of the conversations that you think that we need to have specifically here in central Kentucky? What can we do? I think we got to have conversations about um, experiences that, um, you know, different um, you know, people have. Um, there are certain talks that my father had with me growing up in regards to law enforcement and driving that some of my white friends didn't have to have when they were coming up. Um, and that's okay, um, but that's a great conversation starter. 
why did you have to have that conversation with your dad and why didn't you? And I think those are the type of conversations that we can have and we can learn from one another um, that can ultimately bridge that gap. Um, I'm of the belief um, that a lot of what we're seeing, some of the biases, some of the, you know, the inflamed rhetoric is not based in hatred. Um, some of it is, but I think most of it is based in ignorance and just lack of information. And I think the more we get to know each other, the more conversations we have, I think we can, you know, start to come together. So what's next for you? What are you working on now? So I'm working on a new album, King Tucky 2. You know, I dropped two new projects in 2020, so I'm working on the new album. Um, obviously, the, the new collaboration with the University of Kentucky. Um, this year, we look to take my daughter's memorial library, the Luna Library, to the next level. Um, she passed away in April of 2020, so we started a new library in her name where we're giving away free African-American books um, to all kids of all races. And hopefully the context of the information that can be read and learned in these books can help bring people together um, and just kind of see what this pandemic does. You know, so much of, of what we're doing is reactionary now because we don't know from month to month what the restrictions are going to be and what's safe and what's not. So, um, you know, that's my focus right now. And then depending on this pandemic, hopefully it'll open things back and I can get back on the road and start speaking to schools and doing some mentoring again. We hope that as well. Divine Karama, thank you so much for what you're doing for our community and thanks for your time. God bless you. Thank you, Jennifer. God bless you too. And stay with us. There's more to come here on Best of the Bluegrass.